So we haven't done uh, the two string method, uh, overloading two string method. So uh, with every object, you will get uh, the few methods that are tied with the object class. In C sharp, everything is derived from the object class. So object class has few methods, two string uh, equals uh, something like that a few methods so these methods are common to every primitive type and every object in C sharp whatever you make whatever class you make that that will be there so the two string method is very common let's say you have a number and you want to make it to a string and you just use the two string method that's it so let's say you have defined a new class and uh, you uh, use the two string method and then you will see the name of the class and with the namespace so if you really want to change that two string method to behave dif differently you can just override it and that's good that could be your assignment to you try it out it's very simple so method method overloading we have talked in the coding that it's uh, ad hoc polymorphism or say to be uh, static static po polymorphism it's very simple to do calling by base class we have seen it and static modifiers you can check out the link generic says were released with dotnet framework 2.0 around 2005 generic says released to solve special kind of problem and if you know c++ templating it is similar but not the same thing and in this session we're going to talk about very basics of generics we're not going to go very deep into it and the reason behind I'm talking about generics is because it is a type of polymorphism it's known as parametric polymorphism so let's see some of those in coding I'm in Visual Studio and I have an example called vector if if you have ever uh, done any C++, uh, C++ programming, you'll know that there is a data type called vector, which is which implements the array and abstract the way that uh, abstracts the uh, limitations of array and give better functionalities. So we have the same thing in C sharp. It's called the list. So I made a new data type called vector, and I really didn't go through the underlying coding. Uh, the complexity I just uh, make the list to work behind the scene that's it I just use it to prove or show you the generics is that's it nothing else so that's why I make the simple code so whenever in C sharp you'll see these angle brackets you have to understand that this is the generics that's it and the thing that put into the angle brackets are the data type the data type that you put the system will be look like that the object or class will be look like that so here I have the list or the vector only for integers so whenever I create this vector I will have only the integer numbers to add in the list that's it I have the add capabilities I just call the add function uh, and uh, in the constructors, I really make the uh, capacity to 100 and you can change it by explicitly saying the capacity in the constructor and it's really very straightforward code. I also have a new me uh, additional method called print all. It will print all the list items in the console and you can get any uh, positioned item and it, you see that it works like an array. To have this third bracket working in my class, I have to overload uh, the uh, operators. But I really, I was really very lazy at this point, and uh, just go over very quick. Uh, I'm in my main program, and I may have an example. Okay, this is my vector class that I have created with 200 capacity. It means 200 items are already created in the array as now and then I'm adding the items to the array and printing all that's simple that's it so let's really print it 
123 and and hello world is the print statement so that's really minimize that print out so the problem is you cannot add a string to this class if you do this you, you will have an error to solve this problem the generic says are introduced so we have also a generic class for this vector type and as you can see that in the previous example I have used the int and here I'm saying D and the T is came from the template name that I have defined after the class name so to make a class generic what you can do that uh, put your cursor after the class name and use the angle bracket and then name of the template template that you want to use as generic and if you have more than one template write it with column more that's it so if we really want to replace that t just put this name template and it will work just fine so uh, and in most example you are going to see the t because that's really very common and uh, try to use the common names because it will be helpful and that's it it's not very a rocket science so whenever someone uh, creates your class they're going to put uh, the data type in between those angle brackets and you are going to have the benefit uh, or they are going to have the benefit of generics so let's really compile this and put this to t and let's for the simplicity uh, example purpose uh, let's keep another uh, template parameter name more so what's the problem there and okay so let's remove this well and successful so let's really see this in action to our program here is my uh, generic class previously it has only uh, one generic parameter but now I have used another generic parameter which is more which is no use in the class as you can see when I come up I will see the parameter name and I will see that int it's actually nothing but let's say it's in it is not going to use in the application but for to make you understand I'm, I just gave two, two names in the templates so if you have two names or more than one names you could use it so here I'm uh, adding the in string because I'm taking the string template if I take the floating template then I could do it with floating numbers as well so if I print it run it it's just prints the things that I put in the list that's it that's simple so let's go get over to the code uh, slides and So I'm in the slides, so let's get over this very quick. So why generics? We, if, if you are a C-sharp programmer, and I have talked uh, very recently that every type in C-sharp is uh, implemented or inherited from the object class, even the primitive types. So why need generics? We could just write the object, that's it. Uh, and the generics comes for the performance impacts it really uh, makes a huge difference on performance when it comes to work with uh, maybe 2000 or 10,000 data so try this example if it compiles I haven't compiled but I really assume that it should compile and try it with uh, 10,000 data and try it with integer uh, string floating points 10,000 and compare the times with this class this T class if it works and if it doesn't work then make uh, find the code or uh, debug the code or uh, Google for it uh, find a solution and then compare the performance you'll see the better performance will be gained by generics that's why generics are there and when you do uh, something like these boxes the C-sharp under the hood does some boxing 
and unboxing so uh, boxing and unboxing is good for some time and for these type of scenarios boxing and unboxing really make a huge impact on performance in a negative side of course <laughs>